Hello, my name is Neil. Welcome to Reptile for You. Now, before we start, I want to say a big thanks to everybody that hit the subscribe button last week because we finally done it. Yes, we hit 1,000 subs. Now, that is absolutely amazing. I didn't think I'd ever get there this soon anyway, so big thanks to everyone for that. Okay, so this week we're working on this. Now, this is the Grease Weasel. Somebody mentioned this in a video last week. The Amstrad video. I've never heard of one of these, so we're going to have a play with this and with this five and a quarter drive and see what we can achieve because I'm hoping we can make the disc to the Amstrad and get the Amstrad booted with this because remember last week the Amstrad discs were totally dead. So let's hope we can do something with this Grease Weasel. So again, big thanks to everybody that hit the subscribe button and I shall see you after this short intro. Let's crack on. <laughs> Okay, so first thing before we can get this drive powered on is we need to make an external power supply. Now, I originally used this with the CD32. It's probably okay for powering a drive. I mean, it did power the CD32. Captain Commodore wasn't happy with this because he said that is such a bad power supply, but it did its job. It's got 12 volt, it's got 5 volt, which is what we need for connecting this Molex up. So what we're going to do, we're going to get this connected up so we can power on this lovely five and a quarter disk drive. And hopefully then we can connect it up via the USB, via the grease weasel, which I didn't know anything about these grease weasels. Suggested to me by somebody on a video last week on the Amstrad video. <clears throat> I think his name was Shumble or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, I can't really pronounce it. So this is the grease weasel here that I ordered. So we're gonna have a look at it later. It allows you to connect a USB to a floppy drive cable and a five and a quarter, a three and a half inch, 1.4. And with this, you can basically create Amiga discs, Atari ST discs, PC discs, and Commodore 64 discs, I believe. As well as other discs and obviously the Amstrad disc as well, which we need for that Amstrad PCW. So the plan is today is to get this going, get this connected up, and hopefully create a boot disc for the Amstrad PCW and get the thing booted. So by measuring this out, what I've worked out is the yellow is the 12 volt, you can see there. So that's the white is the earth, and the red is the 5 volt as you can see there so what we need to do is just connect this up to corresponding wires for the molex connector so we can connect and power this floppy drive so i made this now this adapter and it works fine so what i did was connect this drive up to the grease weasel now this is a five and a quarter inch pc drive but i think it's 720k one so I did write some 360k discs on this, but they didn't work in the Amstrad. So what I did now is I stripped the Amstrad down and I removed the disk drive out of the Amstrad. So what we're going to do is connect this to the grease weasel and see if we can actually write the disk because I've got the images downloaded. We just need to write them back to this via the grease weasel and hopefully we we'll put the Amstrad back together and we should be able to boot the Amstrad all being well. So this is a software page you need here. I will put a link down below. And what you need to do, this tells you all about it. Basically, you what you need, the USB driver, your jumper configuration, your drive terminations, etc. And also, in case you want to add external LEDs. Now, what you have to do first is to go to the software installation here. And we need to go to Windows. It's saying if you got Windows 10 or 11, which I think most people have got now, the driver is automatically installed. So do not worry about that. And then there's also two things here, which are graphics, user interface wrappers on top of Grease Weasel GUI. Grease Weasel GUI and fix my 
fix my floppy flux my floppy so these two are worth downloading I'll show you this now so what we'll do we'll just download these same again so that's downloaded you can just go down to this next one download that so you just click on the link as easy as that and download so the first thing we need to do is go back again is tell us here so download simply download the gre grease i can't say this bloody word download the grease weasel host software so here you go so this is the latest one here for 64-bit processor which i've got so we'll download that so first thing to do is grease weasel so what we're gonna do is right click extract all extract wait for it to extract you can see here it's going across So we now have grease weasel here gui and just copy that paste this into here if you can see it has to go in the same ones we extracted same with fix buff my floppy so again we can copy all that and copy it into here that should be ready to run now. So we're just going to start connecting this up. Now we've got pin one there, which is marked by that arrow. Pin one on the cable has got the red line, but it's also keyed. So we'll just lock that into place, just like so. so. That's it for that. The only other thing we need to connect up USB C have plugged in down here so we've got the usb c that's just a standard usb c that we'll plug into there like so and now we have a red light so what next to do is to connect up the drive so you see here again pin one is always to the outside on these things it is got an arrow there anyway that will just slot in that way. Usually these are keyed, but for some reason this connection isn't keyed. That's it. And then obviously the power can only be plugged in one way. And obviously the power can only be plugged in one way. And like so. So now hopefully that is ready. Now what we could do is I've got a floppy disk, the new 3M one, so we can slot that in. Just like so, and then pull the latch to engage it. So let's now switch to the software. So this is what you're presented with. Like I say, you've got COM1, COM3 there, and all you got to do is write to disk, select, select to file, find it on my desktop. I'm going to do disk one, which is the DOS disk for the Amstrad. And we're going to click launch and it will open up this IBM screen here, which will show right in each track like so. Okay, so now this has written a disk, which is here. I'm going to put this back together in the Amstrad, but before I do that, 
I'm just going to quickly write all the other Amstrad discs. So I've got a full working set. Then I'm going to rebuild the Amstrad and we'll put it together and we'll get it on test. Let's hope this works, guys. Okay, so I've got this powered on. Now, for some reason, the, uh, what's his name? It's gone really, really dull, the screen has. So if only knows what causes that, that's a full brightness. And you can just see the words here. If anybody knows what causes that, then please let me know. Now, we've got the disc here, the DOS disc, and we're just going to stick that in. See, it actually boots this time. So, see there now, the disc light is reading. It actually looks like it's working. So, that is a bonus. So, right now, we've got a set of discs. Now, the hard disc going here is spinning. It's booted to DOS. I do directory slash U slash P. On keyboard. See that as listed the directory. I will do F disk. One fixed disk drive. Error reading fixed disk. Gate to return to F disk option. Press escape. Hard disk is making a really funny noise. That's gone to a blank screen, so I think we'll forget the hard disk for a moment. But what I did want to try before I did this video was actually built the other ones here. So let's try the gem. This is a gem startup disk. Pop back. Turn it on. See if we can boot the gem. Basically what the Atari ST used. Again, it's asking me to matches, but looks like this one's loading as well, which is a bonus. It's loading DOS Plus. Unfortunately, you can't really see this. Red consumer electronics. I don't know whether this is a power issue with this on it being so dull. There you go, you can see almost the gem desktop there. Asking for the gem disk. Get that in. So those discs are made with the grease wheels that actually work and then and the here's the mouse. And we can actually view. Copy this. Got air maps. Much. Made a new folder if I wanted. So we've got turn system. We've got something called Doodle there. This is actually a bit brighter on this for some reason. Still really dull. Here we can just do it all. that. Early Photoshop. First, right, so for you, what else can we do? We've got a pen, a razor of different shades, we've got four colors of gray. Of course, we can go bigger if we want. Pull that in, etc. So, that's it for now. I mean, we've got a lot of further with this. This is mainly to show the grease weasel. So, join you in a bit in the outro. Thanks a lot, guys. So, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.
like I said before at the intro, it wasn't supposed to be this week's video, the Grease Weasel. It was supposed to have been the BBC video with a 16-bit upgrade. But unfortunately, until I get that working, it's not going to plan. But I've got some footage filmed, etc. So it should all come together eventually. Again, if you're new here, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button and drop a comment below, even if it's hello. If anybody knows what the hell is going on with that monitor with the Amstrad, why it's so dim, please let me know what I can adjust. I've tried to adjust on the side the pot. I sprayed it with contact cleaner. It doesn't want to go any brighter. I don't know whether it needs the power supply recapping, whether the voltage is low, which it could well be. So maybe that's another video in the future. So for now, I shall see you next week on Reptile for You. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.